switch it up, make it right, cause I'm getting tired. Hey. And even though I'm blessing things, I'm feeling like I need a change. No. Time to make you move, go and get your breakthrough. So what you feeling what you like? Feeling like? Get up, get up turn, turn on, on the light, time to make it right. It right. Hey, 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 good evening, good evening. It is eight o'clock. I'm looking at you. I see you. I love you. I'm so happy to be with you today. Oh my goodness. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Patty. Hey, Lena. And thank you so much, Justice, for making this happen all over again. It's always a beautiful thing. Go ahead, be great. Go ahead, be sexy. Bring forth the magic in the world called love, because you know that's how I work. Look. I don't know. I don't know. I'm stressed how I'm going to pay these. Oh, we all been there. I think I want to bring these out because these are like absolutely delicious. What you feeling like? I'm just going to crack one of these open. Little uh, tamarinos. Like, I love them. They're like amazing and sour and good. Hey, sexy, good stuff. Look, click like and share. You know how we do. We don't know where this show is going to go today, but we do know it's going to. No, actually, we're going to be talking about some uh, polyamory. And um, we're going to uh, talk about a little of what uh, where I come from with this framework um, a bit. And uh, yeah, let's make it happen. Go do right now. Are you doing what you love? I hope that you are. I really hope that you are. I hope that you are. I hope that you're doing what you love. I hope that you're feeling good about what you do. Do you like the person? Do you love the person you're, you are when you are doing what you are doing? Whether you're at work, whether you're with family, do you like the person you are when you're with that, when you're with your family? Do you like the person? It's it's, it's almost Thanksgiving, y'all. Y'all better get prepared because you know you got to like who you are when you get in those, to those spaces. You have so many things. All eyes are on you, right? That's how it feels. All eyes are on you. Um, but it, it's so good to see all of you. Um, I had a wonderful, I, I'm, I'm still, fe can I just be, I'm still feasting on Sunday. I'm still feasting on Sunday. I know some some of us were there on Sunday and, and, and things with me who joined me at the Valley. Very good. It was such a beautiful moment. I just, I'm still, I, I feel like I came out of like, um, you know, out of one of them old school um, services years ago. Where, 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 where it's still on you. You know, they, they, they say that the love is still on you. Uh, it's still on me, uh, if you will. It, you know, I, I don't know if some, some folk ever had that experience after some Sundays. It, you just, it, it, like the love is just still on you and it's still just ri riding on. It's like, dang, that was just Sunday. Now it's Tuesday, right? Um, and, and, and it feels good. It feels good. It feels good. It feels good to be with, with, with community. It feels good to, to 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 share and it it feels good to um to sing with it to to be a symbol of it to to connect with it and um you know and I and I want to say this I uh, you know I, I mean we we this this month is just incredible we 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 we, we did um we we celebrated um you know trans lives um for for those who celebrated on Friday or got to it on a Sunday. Uh, you know, thank you for holding space for our ancestors, those lives that we lost who became ancestors before they had to. Um, I, 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 you know, it, it's, it's, it's such an act of love. It's such an act of love, but it is, it's a tough act of love because it's rooted in a very bitter place uh, because we should not be losing folk. We should not be losing folk all because of ignorance and bias. We should not be losing folk all because people can't get their selves together. We, can, we cannot be losing folk just because people don't understand pronouns. We, we cannot afford to be losing folk. Don't make me have a sermon today on that because we cannot be losing folk. Uh, you know, it is it, it, something, it's something, it's something. Yes, yes, Carolyn, please, by all means come. I'm already thinking about like, can we just get a few bits of your artwork so we can just have like, just, you know, like just going at the very beginning as like a, as just a prelude to the, like to, to what we're doing. Cause I want to craft it out. I want to craft it out. Um, 
I want to craft it out. I, I want, I want, I want to create, I want a community I can create in. If anybody wants to join me in creating community at the Valley, let's create. I, we, we are, we are open. We are willing. We, we, and we are a, we are not only accepting, we are affirming. So we invite you to bring your gift and feel celebrated and honored uh, and join me in, in making a more uh, creative and compassionate place with while while being there with such wonderful friends of mine in in the Susquehanna uh, Valley region of Pennsylvania. It is it is wonderful. Um, the uh, uh, Patty, matter of fact, can you just go ahead and put the um, put the um, we're not meeting this Sunday, but put the uh, um, the website in for uh, for our dear family who who when when they when they hear me talk about the valley so they know who we're talking about it is also giving tuesday uh just to acknowledge that giving tuesday is happening today i know this is like announcements like this is like real announcements uh it's giving tuesday so if you feel free um you know um feel free to like drop me um you know offer anything i'm i'm definitely open somebody asked me what i do on giving tuesday uh you know and it it really really means it really means a lot, uh, you know, um, to to support my work and, and the work that I'm uh, I'm pushing forward and doing. I'm not trying over here. We doing okay. So if you uh, if you want to if you want to give, you can definitely. That is um, uh, cash app. Uh, 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 what is that? It's a dollar sign, and then we got the J Exodus. Uh, so you'll find me, and you'll see the whole little thing. Keep living. Uh, so feel free to give on Cash App or uh, Venmo, which is also J Exodus as well. And um, I, I just appreciate that. So I, I'll, I'll put it out like that. I don't need to be making big old posts about that because I do believe that community will will, will, will return in, in greatness uh, to me. Um, I do believe that, and we and, and I work very hard uh, to make sure that I can support those. Let me let me let me go ahead and kick into gear. Let's kick into gear. It is in Canada. In Canada. Y'all know I love Canada. I don't even know why I'm here. Ah. Um, but it is National Polyamorous Day. So, right. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it is it is National Polyamorous Day. And and I'm really excited to to share about that because as some of y'all know, I'm polyamorous. I'm polyamorous. I'm not in a polyamorous. I'm polyamorous. Ooh, right. And like, hold on, what, what are you talking about? So like, I want to make sure like we really, really, really get like a good sense of like polyamorous day, right? And that good sense is this, right? I know for myself that I'm a polyamorous person. I know that because of the way that I myself experience love and the way that I need to experience love. It didn't dawn on me. And I thought I was, I thought there was something deeply wrong because of the way that I could draw or be drawn into people and the way that I could actually feel comfortable with them and the places of having and wanting to have a deeper connection. Um, some of these things, not necessarily always sexual. Um, they can be very sensual and very uh, deeply intimate, but nothing more. This is very important for us to understand about some of um, individuals who identify as poly. And there are several friends who are also probably identify as poly personally, but do not disclose. And I wanted to honor them because I know that um, there are a lot of friends who cannot talk about their polyamory. And there are a lot of friends who actually cannot share that they have other partners and their partners are not able to do that um, for various reasons. And I'm sure you can understand why, um, because many people misconstrued what, uh, you know, um, misconstrued what it means to be um, polyamorous. And I want to hold space for those individuals and a lot of, a lot of you who have uh, of course, um, you know, can't come into my space. Uh, you know, please know that you are confidentially held in this space, as well as that if you are in this space and you're just kind of scanning through for the first time, and we're going to talk about polyamory, I want to invite you to this idea of polyamory. Um, and that if, uh, 
you uh, have not had the chance, um, I did post on Facebook about it, but I, I want to share with you the importance of, 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 of where it comes from for me. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would say that um, I, I had the experience that some people experienced a lot in the 90s. A lot of young people in the 90s experienced, uh, exper experienced a house where, where um, separation and divorce was normal. Um, my parents um, were split up and I would go to both parents' house. Right. For me, I had to figure out a way to keep the balance of both my parents. I loved both my parents. I think in many ways this too also informs possibly the way that I engage in balanced relationships and creating balanced relationships. I'm not necessarily sharing. Um, I know some 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 of our friends like to use that word sharing. How do you share your friend? How do you share with somebody else? How do you share your emotions with that person? How do you share? I don't actually use the word share often. I actually use the word experience. So right when I experience someone, um, we may exchange in values. We may exchange in emotions, sensuality, intimacy, what so have you, even creativity. All of those things are up for grabs, you know, because not every moment is, um, you know, and not, not everybody comes to polyamory because of the fact that they're that they're seeking uh, or looking out for somebody. Some people come to polyamory just because it just arises on them. Um, and so there are several, you know, several aspects, but be open to your relational evolution. That is my best advice to give you. Be open to your relational evolution. Now, this doesn't mean that everybody's gonna experience this, right? Not everybody's gonna experience wanting to be polyamorous. It doesn't work for everybody. And that's okay. And it's not, and it, and because this conversation is happening, it doesn't mean that I'm hetero bashing, okay? Um, because I'm all here for the couplets who are doing their thing, okay, and making it happen. All right. So if you are a couple and you are doing hey, more power to you. Monogamy, non-monogamy, I love it all. As long as we're practicing love and we can practice also being in the same space together and honoring those relationships of difference. So where does this, where, you know, my experience is that, yeah, I had two parents who were, who were separated, but I really, really, really loved both my parents equally. And that, like I said, I think in many ways that informed the way that I ended up having a relationship in the future. Uh, and it really was helpful. Um, I never lost the love that I had for my father, even though my father, you know, was separated from my mother. I loved my mother and I, and, and it was a really healthy balance. Um, I actually valued them separated more than together. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing. Um, of course, I was grateful when they got back together much, much later on when I, you know, of course, was in my later 20s. But when I was 10, I was actually kind of happy. Um, I saw my mother blossom and I saw the, I saw her I saw her do things that made her a lot more um, independent and in seeing who she was as a woman who was able to do the things for herself. Um, so, yes, right, this idea of having a poly configuration is so, you know, was was something that I, I, I really didn't, I, I didn't understand. I didn't know it was gonna happen. I, you know, I myself was like, okay, there's something really very unique about the way that I experience intimacy, relationship, connection with people. And I, what's, what's wrong, right? Because I'm not seeing anybody else doing this thing. I don't, never heard of it. And, you know, everybody has their, their way of coming into knowledge, right? Coming into knowledge. I came into knowledge about needing to understand myself as a polyamorous person. And I felt affirmed when I really got back into a lot of my African-based practices and cultural practices and understanding like, not only are there myths, but like, I mean, there were communities in Africa, particularly you know, West Africa, um, especially within the community where um, where my genealogy kind of falls, uh, the Balanta people, it's a lot of uh, poly configurations. Uh, and so um, these, you know, this was this was nothing. This was this was not this is nothing abnormal for African American communities. Uh, you know, and so for a lot of my African American friends who are really feeling, you know, repressed and, and not able to you know, express their polyamory and not able to fit this kind of myth of, of, of like everybody is this way. I, I want you to know that this 
is also a cultural practice. It is also a part of your heritage. It does come, and there, and it is not a strange thing. Poly, polyamory for some of, yeah, I, I'm going to dispel the myth that it is. It is not just a white thing. Okay, and so we can get rid of that myth. There's a say. There's some myths. Y'all gonna be like, what? I've never heard that before. Yeah, that's a myth that you know only white people explore these kinds of things, right? Okay. No, no, no. Every, every everybody's got a thing. Okay, everybody's got a thing, and we and we also are polyamorous um, within so 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 uh, some social cultural uh, developments. But you know, the affirmation that really helped me the most was this. Uh, was, is is really rooted in. Uh, particularly uh, the mythology of um, of Oshun, and some of you have heard me talk about Oshun before. I talked about Oshun last Sunday, um, you know. But Oshun uh, really is one of one of my favorite uh, guardians, spiritual guardians uh, of sweet water, love, and beauty. And 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 really, the interesting thing about her is that she's in a love triangle almost all the time. I mean, talk about a lovely being who is like, I've got love, and I've got it everywhere right and so like she like she just exudes love and she's so beautiful that you can't help but to be drawn to her can you imagine what that looks like oh my gosh so yeah she's in this poly she's in this like triangle where these you know two lovers are constantly you know tangling to try to figure out how to like who's gonna win her over and then at the same time one of the lovers who's a king named Shango, like has another, um, you know, has um, has a wife who's a, who's a queen named Oba. And, and Oba and um, Shango and Oshun are actually, you know, in a actual configuration. Um, they, they share in, um, in, in her being entrusted. Uh, to to love and care for them, right? She uh, she she befriends she befriends them. Um, she advises. She's a part of you know protecting the love of their marriage as well as them not only as a couple but collectively. Oshun is amazing in that way, and so I, I just really appreciated the fact that like when I read and when I think about polyamory, most people define polyamory within the within the vein of we, what we know to you know mean. More than one love. That's what some, you know, that's what how it's been interpreted. More than one love. I invite you to to look at it not only just as more than one love, but actually the ability to love more. The ability to love more. Right? And, and this is this is something very powerful. This is nothing different. These are things that James Baldwin talks about. Being able to embody love as a being. The beingness of love. I mean, Oshun is a being of love. And, and, I, and, and, and so I, I think it's important for us to acknowledge that there are some, some people who have a, relation, a relational capacity. Yeah, a relational capacity and a relational evolution that is waiting to bloom and flourish. And we have to hold space for that too. It's not just a sexual thing, right? It's not just sexuality. We're talking about relationality, which is very different. And how do we do that? How do we get to a place where we can also hold space for radical, radical moments when really it's not even radical when it's really traditional? Look at that. It's culturally traditional. People, you know, they come to the moment in realizing that I'm a person who has the ability to love more. And I have love to give. And I am willing to meet anyone who is willing to receive the love and reciprocate the love that I have for them. It's a very powerful gesture. It doesn't even have to be rooted in anything intimate. Can you imagine if we stretched ourselves enough just as a community, just as a global community, just as a beloved community to have that kind of love work? When I think of polyamory, especially for myself, I love to think of the idea of community because collaboration happens. 
it's a very powerful tool to work together, to figure out, you know, what contributions can you offer and contribute? And, and you begin to realize that you sharing gifts and that there are intersections between your gifts that strengthen each other, right? That's a beautiful way of having community. In community, communication happens. And not just any kind of community, right? I mean, any kind of communication. The, the kind of communication that happens in a poly configuration is really, really, it, it's really powerful because it's, it's not, like when I think of communication, some people are like, oh yeah, you have to communicate with me. Like, tell me what it is. I don't want someone to just tell me. I want to be in dialogue. I want to be in conversation. And so I feel like in this sense of thinking this way about, we get to be in, in, in the with component. We get to be in conversation. So there is constructive conversations that happen in poly configurations. Um, and this doesn't mean that this doesn't happen. I hope that I'm sharing some things that also will help you in maybe practicing healthy uh, styles of, of relational development, because this is just normal relational development. But these skill sets are often used highly um, when you have sometimes to experience one or more per uh, persons, that you have to be in conversation to have constructive conversations, building together. So it's always inviting someone to also create the relationship that answers to the love that you know and can identify, right? You end up creating. And, and then as you're creating, you begin to strengthen your relationship through a framework of cultivation. All right, so let me back up a bit because I don't want to lose anybody. But when we think about the work of the things that we can learn from poly friends and people, we can learn a lot about seeing polyamory as an act of community, right? And this is a community that, that doesn't just let you go. And it's very different than individuals who are, you know, swingers or, you know, who come from a place of being sexually positive. Um, they should not be, you know, should not be understood as people who just couldn't get their life together within a relationship who constantly cheated. Okay. So we're not talking about cheaters. That's a whole nother conversation and a whole nother topic. I'm glad to talk about on another day. And I'm glad to hold space for those who need to have that conversation about cheating. Uh, and yes, you can be cheated on in a polyamorous relationship. This is very true. I know some people I'm, I'm dispelling myths from, for folk. Uh, not everybody in a poly configuration sleeps with each other. That's a that's another myth. <laughs> so we all don't share the same bed, nor do we want to. <laughs> um, but I do want to tell you, yes, it is community. And that community begins to collaborate. And though this has been a, a common theme for some people who have relationship, I use the word collaboration instead of compromise. Okay. I use I use that instead of instead of compromise because compromising is a very give give or take situation. In collaboration, I'm inviting you I'm inviting you for all of your relationships to learn how to to uh, actually get to a place where where you learn how to yes present and not only present but promote and then preserve the integrity that you have to offer. So that's how collaboration works. When those things become questionable, then you're compromising. You see how that happened? When I began to no longer promote my values, my presence, when I began not to present my best self and when I can't preserve it, when I'm in a relationship and it's not serving me, that's a compromise, right? So we need to move that out of the way. I need you to stick with all of your all of your peas with me, okay? I need you to stick with the presentation of yourself. I need you to stick with the promotion of yourself and the pres and 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 not only just the presentation but the preservation of yourself, right? And all of who you are that you have to offer in a relationship and that's how you collaborate. Because you're never going to lose yourself in the process. If you lose yourself in the process of loving someone, mm, think about that, okay? So this is why we're collaborating. And then what happens? 
is then as you're collaborating, right, you develop constructive building blocks here, okay? Building. You don't just tell somebody what you're doing. You don't just tell somebody how you're feeling. You don't just go and tell somebody anything because no one deserves to be talked at. They deserve to be talked with. So there's constant mindfulness happening in the dialogue of your relationship. There is constant mindfulness. And there are going to be times where you're going to have to assert. Yes. And there are going to be times where you're going to have to put forth this energy to be very clear that this might not work for you in this way. Whatever that is, right? I don't wash dishes. So this is better for you to do because that's not my strength. That's a real thing for some people in relationship. Hey. It's a real thing, right? And then, you know, hopefully you have kids and then you want to have like, you know, like make them wash the dishes. That's all. I'm just picking. I'm just picking. But, but right, it's, it's that. It is that moment, right? Building the constructive conversation so you are not being talked at, but you are being able to talk together with each other in collaboration with each other. So you're building, you're constructing a conversation. And then where are we arriving? We're arriving at creating. Creating. Can I offer you a word with a definition or just an ethic, if you will, for creating? Creating is the moment of flourishing. Flourishing. It's flourishing. It's rooted in an evolutionary practice to create the way and respond to the love that you know and recognize for yourself. I appreciate talking to some of my partners because they're so different. I'm gonna talk with them. I learn something all the time. And then I have to, I have to figure out how I wanna create. And I have to figure out what that creation is gonna look like. And am I only creating by myself? I'm creating it with them. Sometimes it's just me and, and, and one. Sometimes it's three of us creating together. Sometimes it's just me by myself because I want to answer the call to creation. Creation is enough. I do believe that. I really do. And I think it gives us the opportunity to not get stagnated you can have the relationship that speaks to your heart and speaks to your soul and speaks to your mind. And it's okay. I think we've forgotten how to create for ourselves the love that we are so that we so desperately desire and we fail to commit to it. That's another. I'll get to that in a minute. We fail to commit to the love, to the creation of that love, because we feel like we have to be like somebody else or maybe answer to the calls of what everybody else in the world is doing or 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 or, or, or because we didn't read, because we read it in the book this way. I can be honest with you. I don't read any, any of those books. <laughs> I like, I, 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 I mean, when I say I didn't read, like I've read Ethical Slut, don't get me wrong. I've read it. It's a great book. If you ever want to read it, I recommend it. Uh, Justice, if you can put that in the chat for some of our friends here who, have, who might be exploring or having moments where they want to figure out how to communicate. I think it's great if you want, if you need that kind of guidance. I don't necessarily need, uh, I didn't feel like I needed that. Um, I really needed, I, I, what, what came for me when it started with me and what it, what it really started with was me with my life partner story. It came down to, I had to trust her. She had to trust me. And all the other language, polycules, metamor, all these fancy words, we had to trust each other. and know that our hearts were aligned and falling in, in, falling in love with the learning of each other because this was an evolutionary process. This 
was the relational evolution that we did not foresee when we got married. I'm talk I want to talk to a few married folk if, if I can. If you got a ring on it, okay, and you're walking around like Beyonce, hey, if you love me when I'm saying put a ring on it, all right, if, if you got something, and you all of a sudden hit that moment where you're like, oh, it's okay. And right now you probably like the language. You probably, probably, oh, I, I'm not even trying to be looking at nobody else. Practice, practice those courageous conversations. Because guess what? Out of all that creation that you're doing and the creation you're going in and the evolution that you're going through, let me tell you something. The best thing that I had with me was someone who was committed with me. We were committed to the process of love. Committed to the process of love. I have met so many beautiful people, whether monogamous or non-monogamous, who are committed to the process of love, the evolution of their partner growing, the creation of the experience together. When new dreams come and they feel like they can't create that dream, they are creating dreams together and making a manifestation of those dreams. They are creating organizations, they are creating businesses, and they are creating plans. It is powerful when we start to create, but you got to have somebody who's committed. It's a very different thing when you start having a conversation and constructive conversations on if you understand each other and making sure that you not only just understand each other, but you can not but respect each other while you were having that process. That's commitment. It's in the respect of having that constructive conversation to help each other meet that need. Patty, I'm really talking about you and Pop because I see that creation happening and it's so powerful. And I, I, that's what I see. It, like it's it's in that. It's it's in also right the ability not only to just have a a, a a a a courageous conversation, but then it goes right back to the center of community. It goes right back to community because then you realize you're never alone. You're never alone. You're never alone. There will be different aspects of you that you may experience with someone else that you don't bring to someone else. That's okay. You're not holding secrets. They just met you where you were. To have that courageous conversation, to help you construct it, to help you collaborate, right? And they were committed in that moment to it. This is the beautiful thing about this work. There's a lot you can learn from some of our polyamorous friends because if they're really practicing, if they're really practicing an ethic, an ethic, where they are reimagining, but reimagining with healthy, not just good, healthy intention. You learn something. Stay committed. Stay committed. Stay committed to the process of love. It won't fail you. It won't fail you. It's your driving force. But when you got people that you can experience love with, not just share it with, experience with, I mean, experience like a concert, like a, like a, like a, like a symphony, like a, like a roller coaster, like a, it like, like buying the new home, like, like driving in the car and you know you should be driving 60, but you go at 80 because it just feels that good and your hand is out of the window and it's just, yeah. Allow for your love to be an experience and embrace it when you experience it. Like you're screaming for a football game. 
like you decide to dance on the on the dance floor and be open be open to it it's very different polyamory is something that's very powerful when done with healthy intentions you can have the community you can have the collaboration you can have the constructive conversation. You can have the creation. But most of all, you can have the commitment to be loved. And hopefully, you'll love them right back. Hey, it was wonderful to be with you. Thank you for following me up tonight. Click like and share. And I appreciate y'all so much. And. Uh, Happy polyamorous day for all of my lovers out there. Happy love day just in general. Because if you're taking my definition, all of you got an ability to love more. So I don't care if you're monogamous or non-monogamous. Celebrate the love that you've got. Justice, give me that love work. Eat more of these. Have a good night. I'm your host, Diablo Full Evangelist. Today, I get a super. Join me on Sunday at the Valley. I appreciate you. Love yourself in the process called life because it's beautiful. Be good.